Hey everyone, Namaskar and welcome to Curries with Bumbi. Today I have come with a delicious cauliflower recipe. It is spicy, packed with flavor and the best part is that gravy. This is my very special cauliflower masala curry. The very first thing you need to do is boil some water. Put the cauliflowers in a bowl. Add about a teaspoon of salt. Add the hot water. Cauliflowers have this tendency to soak up a lot of oil, but if you allow them to sit in hot water for a while, they absorb less oil. Let the cauliflower sit in that water for about 15 minutes. Please set a timer as you do not want them to sit in that water beyond 15 minutes and get soggy at the end of cooking. In the meantime, let's start with the prep work. Here I have got half of an onion, a knob of ginger, and a few garlic cloves. We are going to blend these. Though my blender is strong enough, but still I like to chop these into small pieces before adding them to the blender. Add a few tablespoons of water and blend them to a fine paste. Here I have got two large tomatoes and the other half of the onion. You can even use canned crushed tomatoes. I also need some cashew nuts. If you do not have a powerful blender, then do soak the cashew nuts in hot water for about an hour in order to get a fine paste. I am going to blend these as well. So lots of blender work for this recipe. You need a fine paste like this. Coming to the spices, I need turmeric powder, Kashmiri red chilli powder, you can even use cayenne pepper or regular red chilli powder. Then paprika, if paprika is unavailable at your place then use more of Kashmiri red chilli powder. Coriander powder for that citrusy kind of flavor and cumin powder for that smoky earthy kind of flavor. Add about 4 tablespoons of water and mix to make a paste. In the meantime, my cauliflowers have reached the 15 minute mark. Drain all the water and shake off the excess. Now you do not need to do this, but I like to dry out the cauliflowers before releasing them in the pan or else it becomes quite dramatic once it hits that hot oil. You know, hot oil and water both cannot stand each other and I really dislike when my stovetop gets oily and then that post cooking cleanup. So better do this extra step than dealing with all that mess. I will start by frying the cauliflower. Heat some oil in a wide pan over medium high heat. Once the oil turns hot, add a pinch of turmeric powder and immediately add the cauliflower. And if you didn't do that extra step of drying that water from the cauliflower, then be prepared for all that splatter. Cover it over medium low heat and we will move on to the next step. Let's start making the gravy. Take oil in another pan and heat it over medium heat. We need a dried bay leaf, a small cinnamon stick and green cardamoms. Once the oil turns hot, lower the heat and then add these whole spices or else the spices will burn. Then I added cumin seeds. As always, allow the seeds to splatter. It is very important to allow those seeds to splatter to release their flavor. Then add the ginger, garlic and onion paste. Increase the heat to medium and stir till the raw smell goes away and they get well fried. Coming back to the cauliflower, give them a stir from time to time. You want them to get cooked to about 90%. So from time to time uncover, give a stir so that they cook evenly. Now again back to the gravy. 
Some of you ask me how do I know that the ginger and garlic paste is well fried? When you see the oil leaving the sides, like see that oil all around the edges, when you see that, you will know they are well fried. Next, lower the heat of your stove to low and add the spice paste. Keep stirring so that the spices don't burn. Once you see that oil floating on top, it's time to add tomato, onion, cashew paste. Give a good mix. Cover it partially keeping a little gap so that the steam can escape. Keep it covered on a low heat for about 20 minutes. Okay, my cauliflowers have browned up beautifully and they are almost done. They have turned tender and they will again go into the gravy so take them off once they are just tender. I switched off the heat and they are all set to dive into the gravy. Remember to stir the gravy from time to time. Since you used cashew nuts, the gravy will have the tendency to stick to the bottom of the pan. So remember to stir from time to time. Always keep the heat on medium low. This low and slow heat will cook the tomatoes well and make them lose their sourness. Okay, as you can see, some of the oil is starting to float up. That means the gravy is almost getting done, but we are not there yet. Now see that oil? It is covering almost the whole surface. When you see this, you will know that the gravy is ready for the next ingredient. Indian cooking is all about patience and stirring and cooking on slow heat but it pays off at the end just trust me now comes coconut milk this will make your gravy creamy and silky and will take it to that ultimate level of yumminess i rinsed out my cup with little bit of water Then comes sugar to balance the flavor. And no, I haven't forgotten the salt. Now I will be adding kasuri methi that is dried fenugreek Greek leaves. They have this sort of pickle-like note to them, but it is quite strong, so do not add too much as that will ruin the dish. Finally, garam masala powder, which is usually added at the end so that it doesn't lose its smell in the long cooking process. Now finally it's time to add the cauliflower. While the cauliflower is soaking up all that goodness, I chopped a green bell pepper and a quarter portion of an onion. You can even replace the green bell pepper with green peas, but do add the onion as you will love its flavor. Add them to the gravy. Now cover it for 5 minutes on low heat. Cook till the capsicum reaches up to your desired level of tenderness. Just keep in mind that the more it cooks, the more they lose their bright green color and even the flavor. Finally, my favorite, coriander leaves. I mean, I am a coriander lady and by now some of you know that. The gravy after all that pampering and slow cooking turns into a yummy deliciousness 
and the cauliflower turns extremely delicious after soaking up all that gravy goodness. Please send me your feedback after trying this recipe and do leave a comment as I love reading them. This is Bumbi and thanks for joining me. Please take care of yourself and each other. Bye bye.